Hi everybody, I think I want to do a little bit of a um, firing review this week. Talk about some of the things that came out well, some of the things that were total failures, and uh, what changes I might make to help adjust some glaze recipes and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, please, please join me. Alright, so let's get started here. Um, let's start, let's start with, with a medium a medium pot. Um, this this one here is just a simple little vase I threw and it has my straw ash glaze on it. This is Custerfeld Spar. No, I'm sorry, this is uh, Minspar Sodafeld Spar and um, straw ash. About 70% Minspar Sodafeld Spar and 30% straw ash. Uh, kind of bland. Um, not terrible, but I mean this is this is no good here. Some glaze got rubbed really thin while I was loading it. Um, some bits came off. It was just a test. I just wanted to see how the glaze flows. Um, I'm not super impressed with it. I'd like it to flow a little bit more. So I fluxed out the glaze in the bucket a little bit more by adding some more um, straw ash lye to it, back to it. Um, stuff I had washed out, I concentrated and re-added um, to help get some more sodium and potassium in there to help flux things. Altogether, not terrible, um, but not great. Certainly not something I'd sell. So we'll just set that one aside. Um, here's an interesting result. Um, let me make sure that's in frame. Yeah, that's that's in frame. Um, this is, uh, this is the, uh, a Valpation Green Glaze, which is this one here, um, fired with my Timothy Hay Ash Glaze on top. And for some reason, that leads to more reduction and a redder glaze color, those two layered, layered on top of each other. I'm kind of enjoying this red. I'm going to try another go round of this combination um, and just reduce a little bit heavier to see if it'll come out more red. Um, so this is something I discovered that's worth playing with, with the glaze combinations I have available to me. Um, I was not expecting that to go re red in any way, shape, or form. Um, this one here is... Um, a Val Cushing recipe, again, they're all Val Cushing recipes aside from the ash glazes that I've made up myself, um, but some of them have slight tweaks to them. This one is an iron saturate. This one has, um, I think, 10% iron oxide in it. Uh, it looks really similar to a Temoku. Um, if I had known it was going to look this similar to a Temoku, I'm not sure I would have made it, but I also think that it's in some ways kind of a better Temoku. It goes really, really nice and black. I really enjoy its color. It has some little speckles in it that are that are interesting. Um, I'd love to see it in the soda kiln. As it sits, it's a little bland. Um, I'd love to see some more rusty breaking or something like that, but uh, that also might just depend on the clay body and the fact that this wasn't really a particularly interesting application. Altogether, though, the glaze works very well. It's nice and glossy, but it's not pooling. It's just the right stiffness, so I'm happy with that glaze. <coughs> uh, let's do failure. Um, well, this is not necessarily a failure altogether. This is a pot that I made out of a clay body I was trying to formulate a while ago out of some natural dug clay that's available around here in Denver and then um, kind of amending it with some fire clay and some other things. And I actually really like the toasty brown color of the clay body but all of these iron oxide chunks melting out and the resulting bloating is really kind of a bummer. Um, so I'd like to relight make this clay recipe sometime in the future. Um, I only passed this through, I think, a quarter inch mesh sieve. So I, I'd like to pass it through some window screen or maybe even something finer than that to sieve out more of the bits and see if I can get a more consistent clay body um, that doesn't get so cratery. 
And I think this was the Timothy Hay Ash Glaze on the inside here. And yeah. Um, yeah, not great. Too stiff, really lumpy, bubbled a lot. Not too happy with that one. Um, let's see here. This is the um, Val Cushing Green. Um, not very green. Um, definitely flashes red. Got some green around the around the top rim here. I kind of like it. Um, I would really just like it if it had gone green as intended. I think that the firing was a little bit um, too reduced for this to come out green, and I'd like to try this just on oxidation at some point and see if it does anything more interesting. But this one's kind of up in the air for now. Um, I think this the fact that it went red has far more to do with the firing than it does with the glaze. I think there isn't really much wrong with the glaze. It's just that it goes green in oxidation and I reduced. Um, this one is a Val Cushing glaze called Yellow Iron Matte, um, but the recipe spe specified yellow ochre. Um, I didn't have any yellow ochre and didn't really know where I would get any in such short notice, so I went ahead and substituted the yellow ochre in the recipe for, I think, 3% Cedar Heights Red Art clay and 2% yellow iron oxide, and it also has 2% rutile, rutile in it, um, which is an unchanged addition from the original recipe. Altogether, cool glaze. I'm happy with it. Um, it's, it's matte, but it's nice and silky. Great for the outsides of things. Terrible for the insides of things because it's definitely not food safe. It's uh, got 15% barium carbonate in it, so, I mean, unless you want to give it to somebody you really don't like and risk their life, uh, probably not going to be putting this on the inside of anything anytime soon. But it works nicely on the outsides of things. Um, I think it's a really interesting glaze. It's got some cool microcrystalline stuff going on. And I'll just segue from that one into this one, because it has the same glaze. Um, but it was fired in a different area of the kiln. You can see one side of it went yellow, kind of yellow ochre matte. Um, and then on the bottom side, this was fired on side. That's what the bare spots are, is where it was sitting on stilts. This was fired on the top shelf. Um, so this was cooler. This was warmer. And... I got these lovely drips here that I just really enjoy the way those look, and there's some striation here um, as the glaze drips down, which is which is nice. Um, I think this glaze was largely a success. Um, what I'm going to try to do probably for the next firing is reformulate this glaze uh, as a strontium-based glaze rather than a barium-based glaze so that it's food safe. Um, so I will try that for next time around, and we'll see how that goes. I bet it will probably a good, be a good bit different, um, turn out differently, but it might also be cool. Uh, strontium to barium substitutions um, can be iffy. They don't always go well. Um, this is the Tomoku. Um, this is a batch of Tomoku that I've had made up for a while, and I've been kind of fighting with it a little bit. Um, not because there's anything wrong with it, it just never seems to come out that interesting. Um, but it's a really nice black, dark, dark, dark brown Tamoku, and when you wipe through it with finger wipes, it does kind of break a rusty, rusty red color. And so, it's a good glaze. Um, this was just kind of a test fire to just see how it's doing. It's kind of old now, so I wanted to make sure it all still worked and I hadn't glazed anything in a while, so happy it still works. Um, I might throw some native clay in there or something like that, just to, just to see if I can improve it at some point. What do we got here? We got, um, this is the um, straw ash glaze, applied really, really thickly. Um, I like the color, I like the way it feels and, and, and the way it has spread out over the surface and kind of become glossy. Um, the crawling's a real bummer, um, and that just shows you how thick that's on there. Um, just way, way overkill. Um, 
the thing is the glaze had kind of solidified in the bucket and become like almost more of a more of a sloppy uh, consistency rather than a runny consistency. Um, but because this glaze goes on very, very thickly in order to get a good coat, I decided I'd just to kind of see what happens if I put it on really thick. Um, and the results, not so great. Um, but that's why we experiment with things. Um, kind of a bummer that that crawled, but yeah, informative nonetheless. Um, let's see what else that we have in there. We had this pot, which is now stuck in another pot. Um, oh yeah, this is Timothy Hay Ash. Looks very much like the straw hash ash, but just a little bit more celadon-y. Um, fairly happy with it. Um, I'd like it to be a little glossier, so I fluxed that glaze down a little bit too. But, all together, not too bad. Um, this was called Red Chino. This is um, a Red Chino glaze. Not very red. Um, I substitute, substituted the Cedar Heights Red Art Clay in this recipe for some of this native clay that I dug down in New Mexico um, near a friend's property. And um, it's always fun to use stuff that you've dug up or, or found. But in this case, I don't think this stuff has nearly enough iron in it in order to mimic the... the um, the Cedar Heights Red Art. So uh, I'd say altogether not a loss, but not terribly successful. Um, I think that these little specks down on the bottoms are pieces of undissolved clay that even though I sieved this didn't quite didn't quite make it through. So uh, I might try adding some more to see to see whether or not it does anything interesting. Um, but yeah, it's a nice chino glaze. Um, I'll probably continue using this Sheena Glaze kind of the way it is, and then maybe make another patch that becomes redder, because that's actually a, a decent liner, liner glaze. This is some of this New Mexico clay, just made into a slip and painted on the inside of some bisqueware, just to see if it had potential um, as a glaze in itself. And I can say, yeah, um, it did melt, it has a nice rusty brown color, um, but it definitely crawled and shrank off of the surface of the bisqueware. So I think probably next I'll try it as a slip and see if it works as a slip. And if it wants to peel off like that too, then I'll start using it as a glaze ingredient and see if I can formulate it into a glaze. Try some stuff like maybe calcining it and then grinding it back down again. Any of those things to see if I can turn this into a usable glaze material because it looks kind of promising. Um, it's got a lot of iron in it and some natural fluxes and so um, that's kind of in the preliminary stages of of learning. Um, this is Malcolm Davis Chino. I've used this a lot in the past. Um, never have I had it come out like this though. This is one of those glazes that seems like it comes out different after every firing. Um, just because it can look so many different ways based on so many minutely different kiln environments and how long the glaze has been stored for and what clay body it's on and all that stuff really affect it a lot. I'm quite happy with this though. I really like the subtle gold color. Um, all together, this one's a success for me. I'm going to keep using this glaze on other pots. Um, don't particularly love it on this bowl. Um, especially not in the way that I applied it, but I think that glaze is a, is a good one, personally. And last but not least, um, this is a bowl where I tested the Val Cushing Green, um, VCWA Green, and that, um, that yellow matte glaze that was also on that big vase. And I kind of overlapped them a little bit in the middle, and they did something interesting there where the barium from this glaze interacted with, with this glaze, and we got a red. And additionally, this whole pot was liberally painted in um, hay, straw, ash, lye concentrate, which, chemically speaking, 
is mostly sodium and potassium hydroxide. So basically, just this is probably a soda ash wash wouldn't look much different than than the hay ash lye. But I just figured I'd try it out and also see if it affected the melt of the glazes at all. If maybe I would get some running or something like that. But it doesn't seem like I had used enough to really make much of a difference. It did color the clay body some. It gave it a nice little toasty, toasty look to it, which I um, like, and I might continue using in future, um, adding more soda ash washes to things and stuff like that. But uh, altogether, not much more interesting than the glazes in themselves. Um, so, yeah. Kind of in conclusion, I guess, uh, a couple good glazes, a couple real failures, and um, a couple adjustments I need to make to some recipes. And uh, yeah, I like to do one of these after every firing, you know, even if I don't film it or anything like that, just sit down, kind of like ponder the pots, see what I could uh, uh, improve in the future. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good practice to have as, as a potter, just you know, that kind of like occasional self critique. But uh, yeah, um, if any of you have any input, any suggestions, um, any, any things that you'd like to point out or, you know, even, even, even questions about stuff, uh, drop them down in the comments and, and let's start a little conversation. Um, yeah. Keep the pottery community exchanging information. Well, I guess we're all still quarantined at home here. Um, uh, but yeah, have a good one, everybody, and I'll catch you next week.